What's up, future officers? My name is Tejas, and I welcome you all very warmly to episode 20 of I Lead. Today, we are discussing about our neighboring country, Nepal. Now, as soon as you hear this word Nepal, what comes to your mind? Very beautiful, picturesque country, a country of mountains, a country of Himalayas, a country of temples, a country of monasteries. These are the beautiful images which immediately comes to our mind. But what if I told you that the last few days, all of this has changed into something more drastic, something more unprecedented, where all the youth of the country have come together to form another Arab Spring. They have all come together in such a way that they are right now destroying the Prime Minister's house. They are burning the President's house. They are burning their Parliament, their Supreme Court, their District Courts and all the authorities of the government. The Prime Minister of Nepal, K.P. Sharma Oli, he has given his resignation and he has given his resignation to the President and he has flew to Dubai. He has escaped from there. What is the reason for all of this? You might be wondering, what is the reason? The simple reason which is being told is social media ban. Just because of social media ban, do you think all the youngsters, all the Gen Z people would come together and they would form such a revolt? The answer is definitely no. It is not so simple. It is where there is a lot more that meets the eye. And when I say there is a lot more that meets the eye, what I am intending to share is that there are a lot other factors like there is huge widespread unemployment there. There is a lot of corruption in Nepal. There has been a lot of political instability. Regimes have come and regimes have gone. Prime Ministers come and Prime Ministers go. It's almost as if the Prime Minister's seat is a seat where some musical chair is happening. Now, let me take you back to the exact story what is happening. The date was 26th August 2025, approximately some 13-14 days back. In 26th August 2025, the parliament of Nepal, they passed a bill and that bill, it stated that all the social media apps which are there, they have to be registered in Nepal and after being registered by the information ministry in Nepal, they have to come there and they have to send one representative. Like for example, YouTube has to send one representative in Nepal. WhatsApp has to send one representative in Nepal. X has to send one representative in Nepal and station them in Kathmandu. Similarly, uh, you know, you have uh, different, different Instagram, Meta, all these people, they all have to send one, one person as a representative in their company to ultimately cater to the national security. So they had a particular date in which all of them had to come. They had to register. But Nepal being a very small country, none of these big countries paid a lot of heed. There was one particular company which did come and registered. They promised that they will keep one representative in Nepal. That company was TikTok, Chinese company. TikTok, if I have to tell you a little bit of history, it was banned in China. But later on, they again relaunched it and now people of Nepal use TikTok. But all these other companies like YouTube, Meta, X, WhatsApp, YouTube, all these other companies, they completely were banned by Nepal. Now, there was no social media in Nepal. In fact, 26 registered social media apps were all banned. Six, 26 unregistered social media apps were all banned. Now, once the Gen Zs, they heard this, they went mad. They thought that how can we function without social media? It is a basic oppression of our freedom for speech. Freedom of speech is being curbed here. We find employment through social media that is being gone. So there were all these serious concerns which were raised. The Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, he stated that don't worry, this is only a temporary measure. If four people are not getting job today, that is fine. Tomorrow, because of this particular ban, these companies will take us seriously and 40 more jobs will be created. Ultimately, everything will be worth it for the national security. But people were very pensive. They had a very pensive mood about this whole drama which was unfolding. And they were in no position to listen to the prime minister of their country. All they stated was that 
See, many things are being hurt because social media is not being present. Many things are being hurt. Education is being affected. Many of them, they got their education by social media that is being affected. Second one, their employment opportunities are being taken away. A lot of government campaigns or anti-government campaigns were also run okay, for a social cause. They were run on social media. Now, all of them, they stated that because these campaigns were being run, suddenly all these leaders have come to this conclusion to ban social media. Such a kind of dictatorial regime will not occur in Nepal. This is against corruption. This is because there is no employment in Nepal. And we might have all noticed this also. Many people who are the Nepalese, as far as we know, they are our watchmen, they are our servers, they are the people who are who work in restaurants, when they, who are there in the service sector. And in all these people, who are they mainly because they are don't have that necessary skills, they usually end up working all of these odd jobs. If Nepalese government had taken all the precautionary jobs, why would they end up in India trying to find out employment if employment was created there? Another thing which is very interesting is the kind of a campaign which was run which called the uh, kids of the politicians as Nepo kids, as Nepo babies. So because of this Nepo kids, this Nepo babies, who are all this? One, there are actually two interpretations. One, Nepo kids means nepotism, where you have these politicians, their kids were all going to very luxurious trips. They would post their selfies in front of Paris with all these luxurious clothes, luxurious lifestyle, best wine and dine and nice, nice, very, very costly, expensive watches, belts, all of this thing. Whereas the common people, the nascent populace of Nepal, they did not even have the basic employment opportunities. But the politicians, sons, daughters, they were living a very extravagant lifestyle. And the other thing is Nepo, meaning to say Nepal. Okay, so Nepo kids, Nepa, Nepo baby. So this, the term which was trending, which was going on in social media. So many of the Gen Z's, they felt was because this campaign was getting a lot of wind, suddenly they decided to put a complete full stop there. So because of the social media ban, what generally happened is that all the kids, especially the people belonging to Gen Z. Sir, who is this Gen Z you might ask? See, all these kids are born between 1997 to 2010. All of them are considered as Gen Z. So all these Gen Z students, so many of them even in school uniform, they all came, they all started protesting against this government. They all told that there is a lot of corruption. We have a lot of problems. Social media also you have banned. There has to be solutions which has to be fought. And more and more people gathered from all parts of Nepal, not just Kathmandu, from all parts they came together. Now, government, they decided to take a wrong approach here. They decided that they will crush this revolt with an iron hand. They will crush it in such a way that they will use force and whatever means necessary to send all these kids back to their parents. Security forces were deployed with guns being fired at them. 19 kids, some of them with school uniforms, lost their lives. And when 19 kids lost their lives, this took a very tragic turn. People saw this with a lot of disbelief that is this the government which we elected? Is this the government which we voted? They are supposed to work for us, but they are killing innocent civilians. How can we function under such a democracy? This will not happen. And once this news spread that 19 people were killed, Nepal burnt in flames. The protest started being more widespread. It started being expanding. Prime Minister's house was burnt along with his wife inside. President's house was burnt. Parliament was burnt. Supreme Court burnt. District Courts burnt. So much so that the finance minister was hit in the roads, paraded half naked. Okay, this was the situation. External affairs minister beaten. The prime minister, luckily, he somehow fleed from this whole situation wherein he took a helicopter from there, went to Dubai. All these other ministers also are trying very drastically, very desperately to somehow go to the airport. Now, it, what is really amazing is that the Gen Z have, are using drones to come and flash light on these aeroplanes so that the aeroplanes cannot take off. 
the they are not allowing the helicopters to take in these ministers so that they can escape they want them to stay there in this particular juncture the army chief of nepal he advised the prime minister that it is not safe for you to be here please you resign you somehow do some other thing you escape from here so the prime minister also kp sharma ali he hands over his resignation to the president he also flies off to dubai that is the news which is there so the main reason which is being stated apart from the social media ban mainly here is the unemployment which is there the mainly the political regime which is there and the corruption which took place so if you see very recently i think last year even in bangladesh a very similar incident happened wherein the prime minister of bangladesh the ex prime minister of bangladesh prime minister sheikh hasina she escaped from bangladesh and she sought refuge in india what was the problem again same thing youth were not getting employment so on inflation corruption same thing few years back sri lanka started facing hyperinflation so much so that they started borrowing paper for writing exam from india they were almost to that particular extent but in that time also it was india who went and supported them same way even in pakistan also you see a lot of regime changes which are happening there also in sri lanka what had happened the people there they started and going and attacking symbols of authority mainly the parliament so this is something which is happening all around us now is this happening very similar to arab spring which happened around some 10 years back so uh there again something which was very similar here is the social media which took place social media because of social media ban the youth there also arose and they shook the authority in tunisia later it spread to other regions of the sahel region but something which we have to notice is that when a youth are suppressed they don't sit back they don't stay quiet they revolt and when they revolt when they revolt it is going to be massive in terms of destruction so this is our lesson which we learn from here now all this is happening in nepal sir how do we view this from an indian lens now if you see the prime minister who recently flew away to dubai this particular person kp sharma oli he always was a person who had an anti india stance so geopolitically i would say that there is something which is good itself so when i say anti indian stance what do i mean kp sharma oli was this prime minister who built his entire political career trying to fabricate a narrative which was anti indian he brought up that issue of kala pani he brought up the issue of lipu lake of map exchanges he brought up the issue of the constitution when it was there the mahadesis when india tried to raise a voice that mahadesis were not getting represented representation and they were being pushed aside it was kp sharma who told that india was interfering but we were just voicing out our concerns for the vulnerable like an elder brother should but anyways because kp sharma oli is going away it is kind of good only presently but having said this this is from a geopolitical standpoint of view but having said this Nepal is like our younger brother we have to give it support in fact when we talk about india nepal relation one stance or one particular very famous phrase which always comes is between india and nepal we share a relationship of what we call as roti beti ka rishta and when we say roti beti ka rishta that means that nepal has food dependency on india by india we give them food and they send their daughters in matrimonial alliance to india like the very first examples i would like to quote is from ramayana so even our sita ma is from nepal she has come to india to marry a prince from ayodhya which is mainly in up now that same tradition continues where even today we have very porous border with nepal and we see that a lot of matrimonial alliances are spread especially in the states of up and bihar so anything which affects them is almost like it's affecting us so we wish and we pray from insights that this particular issue gets solved as soon as possible nepal finds peace and if nepal finds peace india can also be with peace and with this 
I conclude this session of iLead. I hope that you got some clarity on this Nepal issue. Until next time, this is Tejas signing off. Thank you and have a nice day.